And we do get money from the county. Uh, what was that, Jacob? 60-some thousand? Yeah. That's based on a kitty that they throw together, and it's based on call totals, so we get the most, because we run the most calls in Plymouth County. Uh, but at this time, they have not talked about adding a new tax for ambulance services. Well, yeah. first, my first comment would be, I think the revenue could go up 20 or so. That's an easy yeah, I don't think I'd do much more than 20, but I'd be okay with 20. Yeah, that's what I reckon. So. And then on the, on the employees, it's just, it's always hard when you add a new employee because it's, it's an ongoing expense. So it's not like we're just going to do it this year. It's this year and the next year and then continuing on. And I, I don't doubt there's a need there for it. I think next year you'll see an overtime a real need for it. Mm -hmm. and that's not a threat. I'm just saying yeah. I, I'm not going to keep doing what I'm doing. I can't. Yeah. I just can't. So if somebody takes a day off, then you might pay somebody 24 hours of overtime. And our guys have vacations and sick days and personal days. And I'm just trying to, even one guy would offset some of that to allow us to have another day person to cover some of that. And that's probably the cheaper way to do it than hiring all three. And I shouldn't stand up here and say that, but it is. And I'm a taxpayer too, I get it. Um, initially, to try that and, and then see how that goes without having to pay a bunch of overtime out. What are you guys thinking on the one, two, or three? I would be in favor of the one. So you currently have nine full time staff? And this will take you to 10 if we give you one more? Yeah. How many of these calls are you guys going on when you're not on the shift? When we're not on the shift? Yeah, when it's not your shift. Uh, you basically guys? only the major ones. So structure fires, uh, car accidents, house explosions. entrapment, house explosions. But day in, day out, the ambulance calls are handled by the, the duty crew. Uh, odor investigations, carbon monoxide calls, that kind of thing's handled by the duty crew. Yeah, I mean, I've looked at those numbers and where it comes into play is our volunteer comes in at seven at night. So during the daytime, there's two people. So one of us have to go. Okay. So that's all day long until seven o'clock. And then from seven until seven in the morning, we actually have three people there. So that's less the chance we have to go unless it's a structure fire or something more so major. Bigger. Right. Bigger. So we've tried to do that as well. So, and the problem we run into too is it doesn't care if it's Saturday or Sunday or <coughs> three in the morning or Christmas. I mean, they, they happen when they happen. So, right. in your proposed budget, you put the three additional employees, but then you also bumped up was it overtime from fifty to eighty? Um, I did that because they you were tracking higher. It was hard when we got the new uh, full time ones to project how their shifts were going to. Because they do get some built-in overtime in that. If so we added here's one, here's could we reduce the no. Well, here's the problem with that: the way the shifts work, they work 24-hour shifts. So they work some some pay periods. The way the city's pay periods run, they work four shifts in that pay period, or sometimes they work five, which means they're automatically over their law 112 hours. So it has to be overtime no matter what. Yeah. So the ADA so, yeah. has some overtime figured into it. Yeah. And that's how so that plays into kind of that. part of their salary, basically. Yeah. And we figure that, yeah, in their salary. So it's not like they're getting a huge overtime check. It's figured in their wage, so to speak. So, yeah. so they kind of go hand in hand. Then. Yeah. So, I mean, if you were to cut two people, what's that take out of their 88 times two? Is that right? Another 160, 174,000. Plus the 262 I took out of committee time. That's. Okay. Yeah, the, the one hard thing is, I know, so grants, um, we've talked in the past about uh, potentially looking at a safer grant to add additional firefighters. So the, the timing of that grant's always been really difficult because it doesn't open until kind of after we're done with the budget. Um, and then, it, but it, it closes and I think you can start um, adding people, you can correct me if I'm wrong, late fall. Well, it depends on so, when they when they open safer grants. I was told not to write one last yeah, time, back, yeah. and uh, I wish we would have because that was where they were funding 100% for three years. Um, but 
the way those fall sometimes, they don't award until September or October. Right. And our budget starts July. So we've been trying to play that a little bit too. But, uh, you know, if, if you if you give one, I can always look into writing a grant for the other two. Grants are a problem Future. because when they expire, you're stuck with that. Then you have them. Yeah, no that. different than the cops grant, exactly I mean, right. I don't care what grant you're dealing with. When, you know, when right. grants are all fun and dandy, you know, when they're free. You know, when, they, when they come around full steam, no one says, oh, I guess you're done. <laughs> yeah, because it's know. three years fully funded 100% this right. last school couple of times. <laughs> Wages, everything. But yeah, the school did. Five yeah. teacher positions. Yeah. They said you're done. But at the end of the third year, you're correct, and yeah. the money's gone. So, um, yeah. so we have uh, some support over here to my left for one employee. I thought we were going to wait till the end to do this. We can, well, yeah, at the end okay. we can discuss it. Well, I'm just right. looking, that'd be 176, right? Is that right? Well, I mean, were you factoring in that uh, workman's comp? Because did that make it up about 100 each? Yeah, I didn't have that factored in because that's in a separate one and that one. That's a separate count. That's not yeah. in my budget. Yeah, it's on yeah. and it's on. Yeah. So you got 262, 180, and 176. Okay. I guess Not we'll me. discuss it at the end. <laughs> on, on the land, on okay. the land thing, you know, when I was hearing your pitch on the 200, mm -hmm. I was also hearing that I've got the 150. Color. I can get it. I, I know you can get it, but I, that's in my head. Okay. So I just, so you know, kind of where I'm thinking. Okay. At least, and I'm not saying I'm, I get your whole, both sides of that. Yeah. But. And I, you know, I'm working with you guys either way you want me to do it. I'm, you know, however we got to go about it to get it done. Uh, we got to grow with the community and we got to keep up. And you got a guy named Mark Gall back here that's lighting the place on fire. And I got to go put him out. So it's, it's, it's a good thing. It's a good problem to have. It really is. We're not a town of 5,000 or 8,000 people anymore. I and mean, we can't act like it. Because we're not. So thank you for your time. Next up, we got streets. And that is on page 22 and 23. No back hole. Yeah. <laughs> it's the only thing I'm asking for. That's what trade also, Scott? Yeah. Yeah, trade would be for minus 61,000 because I got more hours on it. What's the uh, life expectancy of these things? I mean, what is yours of 14? So yeah, you've we got, bought you got eight years out of it? Well, be, yeah, be going on 10 next year. I mean, next month, you know. Don't we usually put those on a payment deal? I mean, the three we five used, year, we used, we used to. I don't know. It does help to spread the costs out over various budgets, um, but with where interest rates are at and stuff, those leases are pretty expensive. Okay. Um, so it, it's cheaper to just buy them up. And be done with it. Just be done with it. Yeah. Is there still an issue where you say you want to buy it and a year later you can't get hands on it because it's just not available? No, we're pretty much, I think he told us, you know, if, as soon as this gets okay, it'll probably take eight months or so, 10 months to get it. And he's, there's Rich in here. He left it. Yeah. yeah, they're out, but we'll get it. It's a lock. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, I was in the committee, I sat in all the committees, but uh, the grapple for the tree truck, or the tree truck with the grapple on it, um, that was eliminated, but it just got me thinking about the Ashmore situation and the number of trees we're going to be taking down in the next year. Not here. Yeah. What's that? They're not here. No, but they're in Sioux City. Yeah. So they're here. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah. But how much, uh, with that, I agree with what you're saying. However, don't we farm out more than what? We rent that truck. Um, Brad and I, we pay between five to 7,000 a year to rent that truck. So it's we- It's Kellen's we, truck. We, it's Kellen's truck. So the two brothers are splitting up. Um, Justin's gonna stay with the tree service. They have this extra truck. It's got a new transmission, engine's been redone, and the hydraulics all been redone. So they, since we rented out, they got an extra truck. They were wondering if we'd be interested in, in buying it. And um, so I said, well, yeah, you know, so we hire them out to stump all of our trees. So I don't know what you had last year, 100 and some. We probably had about 150 to 200 stumps that we hire them out to save money. We rent this truck, 
we uh, clean all the stumps out, put the dirt back in, reseed. So will this be available to rent if we don't buy it? Uh, um, I don't know what they'll do with it, if they'll try to sell it or what. Yeah, you had mentioned that they were trying to sell it. Yeah. That's the way I took it, is that, but you never know what them, if they'll keep it parked out there, but I think they were going to put it like on Equipment Trader or Big Iron and try to sell it, but that's why they just came to us, because they know we use it and we ran it from them from year to year. And if they sell that, it's not available for us to rent. Well, then they got one truck that they use, so then we're just going to have to pay them to probably do it all the work. Okay. And they're going to be busy. Well, especially now that they're splitting up and only one brother's doing it, but yeah. That was my only comment on that one. Yes. Yeah. So you want to put it back in? And I will make a comment on that. If you do want to put it back in, um, we could look at screening for it from solid waste um, because it is kind of part of the tree stuff. I would agree. So I, that yeah. has been a cost that we've shared in the past or paid from there. Um, Brian gets so from, from the golf course. course, I don't know. He said they use it too, which I didn't realize. So, yeah. Well, we you don't haul yours away, Brian. But you, you pay them. them up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So they're paying money into it. I don't know how much you, what do you well, he does all the stuff. We well, just, he's, oh, they stump all our tree. All the trees we cut down. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, we can easily use it too. I mean, emerald ash borders, if you draw the circles where it's been located, it is in Plymouth County. The probability of it is, it's not. Theoretically, nobody's found it here in Lamar's yet, but yeah, it's not going to be. The amount of people that come into the campground, um, I mean, that's, they've said kind of predominantly that's people transfer firewood from campground to campground or whatever. That's one of the places that it will come into. And then in a year or two from now, then you'll see it. So, I mean, it's it's going to be here. I mean, it's, it's, in, it's in all the three counties. I was in favor of leaving it in at the committee level, so I wouldn't be in favor of putting it back. That's the I'm good with that. Our salad, please. Yeah. yeah. Half out of solid waste and half out of golf course. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Brian. We'll let him run it. All right. You could probably run it back to Kellen once in a while. Yeah, there might be yeah. times where, yeah. yeah. I think they're a little silly for something. Well, I think they know if they sell it to us, then they can run it back when they need You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But they just don't want two of them sitting there. With Okay. Anybody else have any other comments? Mr. Scott? Thank you. Thanks. You bet. Thank you. Tom, you're up next. Airport.
just the committee meeting that long, we didn't get a chance to talk about it. So it would be to move the foster ground playground equipment, foster park playground equipment, um, and pay for that with local option sales tax. Um, once again, that's something that we've done uh, the last couple of years is play, pay for playground equipment um, out at the municipal park. And then um, this year they're doing West Floyd. We did that work to again for our local option. We seem to be beating up on that quite a bit here. Right, so local option. So if you if you do the fire and police, um, we're looking at 86,000 there. Uh, this would be another 143. So we're looking at 220. Um, we've been bringing in um, about 1.4 for the last couple of years. We have quite a bit sitting in there. So, and there hasn't been uh, it, a significant portion of it used to go out um, to help pay for the hospital, their bonds. Um, and that ended maybe two years ago. Um, so it's kind of been built up. Okay. Okay. Uh, Let's use it. Well, I'm going to add to this because um, I, I know this is going backwards. Well, let's no. Let's first start with um, cleaning and recoding the old Westmark courts. Um, I would like to remove that forty-eight thousand. And there was in the committee level a long discussion on that, um, and Brad can maybe talk to it. But uh, they're in pretty bad shape, from what I understand, and. Um, we figured even if a new fire station or a bigger fire station does get built there, um, it won't probably be next year. Um, and I think you said maybe this stuff has a life expectancy of five to ten years. Yeah, like basically that. five or six years. Um, so we figured it, it would probably almost be used in the life of a recoding it by the time you can reuse that location. Um, but I don't think that's even on the radar, is it? To use that location for it, a fire. It, yeah, it no. was it, it was a banted idea. I right. mean, it was a what if we or what's it look like here? But I don't think there's any traction under that thought. Right. So, so what's your reasoning of removing it? I guess because we don't need it. We don't need to fix them. We don't need the tennis court. We're looking for lots to build houses. Well, there's two sitting there. With all, and I'm probably going to take some fire probably before I get done talking. But the bottom line is, I think they're very lightly used. And they're only used by very, very few people. And yeah, school, school is mostly. Used. One event a year. Yeah. And I, I mean, myself, I would like those removed. Take them off of our chart once and for all. We've got really good tennis facilities out in the park. So, I'm looking at a $90,000. I mean, if you actually remove them, there's going to be some removal costs too, but I'm thinking I don't want to put any money on them. Well, in the community development conversations that we had over those couple of days, we talked about the quality of life type things. If we keep them, then we have to do something with them because yes. we can't have a city facility look like garbage and not Absolutely. be functional. But if we don't keep them, that's a conversation that I don't have a dog in that fight. I just want to say, if, we, if we're going to use them for the purpose that we're used for, we should resurface them. Couldn't agree more. Does the YMCA use them for their summer tennis lessons? They can't. They um, used to years ago, but I don't think they do anymore. I, didn't I, I really don't. <clears throat> <coughs> you Joyce said in the I used to have, I've, I've seen them if you have lessons yeah. out there, but I... Yeah, I'm pretty sure they still do. Mm -hmm. Well, it, you know, once again, I, I think we were going to save this, and I brought it up, mm -hmm. um, because it's just a, in my opinion, a slice. It's been, I've discussed it for years. It's been discussed for years. So that's the first one. The second one is, we had talked about um, the addition of splash pad, at least one. And then the last one, and I'll just throw these all out there, and this is an ad, 
is I want the campground to get some money. When you look at the but when you look at the campground revenue, I do not camp out there. So this is not about me. We have a very good facility, but I think we need to be willing to give him some more money to keep upgrading that facility. When you look at the revenue side of it, Jacob, you breathe heavily. <laughs> 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 yeah, so yes, we do get good revenue out there. Um, there are also expenses associated with it. So, I mean, we have Chad and Judy's contract. Um, utilities get to be quite a bit out there in the summertime. Um, we have phone and internet expenses. And so, it, it's kind of hard to pick up on here. Okay. Um, but there are quite a few expenses associated with it on an annual and monthly basis. I do camp out there. And I believe some of the improvements would be to make the top campsites like the bottom one where you have the full sewer and all that, which would be great because those are the sites that I use and it's a lot easier. That place is great. I mean, we could have more spots and we would fill more spots. Those people, I'm from here in town, but those people that come from other places are spending money in our town. So whether that makes money on its own, it's a good and thing. That coupled with security. I, Jolyn and I camp in different places, different locations, and I know one thing, it's nice to be in secure campsites. We don't. But I also know what it's like to have people come through at 2 o'clock in the morning and run across their butts and, and causing all kinds of ruckus. Okay? So truthfully, we've got a diamond out there, and I want to put some money in it. That's, and, but and it, is all, other, it is a <coughs> been requested on the budget, so <laughs> you, you want us to go out and ask Trudy and them what, what they Well, I know what they would like. Yeah. I mean, it has been requested. I mean, well, I heard I mean so Mark brought up, yeah. Mark brought up, you know, we've had plans that were in the plans, and we still have those plans. They would need to be updated, though, since they're so old, to put the remaining utilities on the north side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, they requested that we expand the campground to go on the north side of the Floyd. Willow Creek. <laughs> okay, and create more sites. They've asked for um, gates, security. Okay, so an individual would have to punch in a code or swipe a card to get into the campground. Right. Um, <coughs> what else have they? They wanted um, fire rings, improved fire rings, and uh, 